<laughs> cool. Okay, well, hello, everyone. Um, unlike the first two talks, where we have seen some pretty robust mature libraries, um, this is going to be a lot more of a cutting edge draft mode of something that I've been working on. So um, yeah, stay tuned. I hope to hear uh, lots of feedback from the audience afterward. Um, my name is John Rodriguez. I go by uh, J-Rod here at Square. And um, I'm going to be talking about, well, I guess we'll just get into it. Uh, on the Cache Android team where I work, we like to move fast, and we expect our tools to help us move fast as well. Um, for example, a few months back, we held the Kotlin World Tour at the Kitchener Canada office, San Francisco, and Melbourne offices, showing the company why we thought Kotlin was an investment worth our time, because it helps us iterate fast. Um, this was a follow-up to a blog post we had in May of 2017, where we announced our commitment to Kotlin at Square. Parallel to this, our team size have grown rapidly. The Android team has grown from three to 11 in less than a year, and we're constantly thinking about how to keep our velocity and delivery up to our expectations. Things on how to tackle CI builds and wrestling with things you're all familiar with, like Gradle and builds in general, um, keeping our unit test speeds down while we can still iterate and move fast and refactor um, to the whims of our product and design um, requirements, and things of that nature are things that we constantly uh, try to think about and be ahead of the curve rather than having to um, find ourselves in predicaments. In the coming weeks, the Cache team will be posting a blog series on some of our latest project milestones. And today, I'm going to give you a sneak peek about one of them. So let's start. Say you're working on the next hot feature. Um, you get your hands on the Figma link from a designer, and you're eager to start coding. As any good Android developer, you probably start by creating a new XML layout file, like so. And from there, you might use the Layout Preview pane in Android Studio to take a quick look at how development is going. Here's how it would ideally look. But once your view iterates past the Hello World example, here's how it usually looks. Um, subclasses, custom views, anything that involves RxJava, you probably have to then, um, in your on attached to window, have something like, if view is in edit mode, return. And at that point, you've defeated the purpose of layout preview. So now, in order to view your work, you have to build the app and install it on an Android device or emulator. This takes a while. Um, I had something here to say sorry, Ruse, because I thought he'd be in attendance today. But um, yeah, this is just the reality, right? You build your app, and you want to do one small thing, and you have to incur uh, the entire build times. And that's because, seriously, the full Android build tool chain is very complex. Resources, assets, any transitive Android library manifests have to be processed and linked through AAPT, and eventually uh, compiled to a binary package mm -hmm. format in your APK. Java source files, they have to be compiled into class files, shrinked, desugared, dexed, all in one step by R8. Apps that are using the old library, the support libraries, will have to be jettified if they're going to work with Android X. So um, finally, your app has to be packaged and installed on an actual device or emulator. So ADB, emulator speeds, while they've improved over recent months, apply changes promises to be better than instant run, but will we know? Odds are is that this is taking a non-trivial time in your builds. Uh, Cache Android, we're lucky. We are builds take an average of three to four minutes, even after enabling the latest flags introduced in the Kotlin plugin 1.320 and up. So we are already tackling things like capped uh, compile avoidance and incremental annotation processing and some of the things that are still very bleeding edge and experimental, and yet we're still at a three, four minute build. Um, I'm pretty sure some of you might be experiencing even slower times, so you feel this pain. Once this is done, you can finally load it onto your device or emulator. But now the hunt to find the screen begins. Maybe your app flow is server driven. Maybe it's behind a feature flag. Maybe staging is down and it's preventing you from getting to your actual screen to test. By now, I think you see my point. This scales really poorly as your app features grow and screens become more complex. Overall, iterating UI work on Android is challenging because it requires an app build to test. This graph uh, is something that Ray Ryan alluded to in his talk with Zach earlier. This is an example of the payment flow in Square POS register, um, how the permutations of navigations between each of these nodes were representing a screen in the app. And so you can see, uh, I think Ray said it was in the order of hundreds. Here you go. Um, and like you mentioned also, tipping, receipts, these are all like potential screens that will come up depending on your configuration. You have to test all these in actual development 
and sometimes you have to actually get your app in a weird, a, 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 in a, rather, a unique state in order to see the screen that you want to test. This problem isn't unique to the cache team, as I pointed out. Android developers all over the world face this burden until soon. Um, in a blog post coming in the next three to four weeks, hopefully, we'll be introducing a new open source library that I've been working on with Jesse Wilson. Its code name is Paparazzi, and it's a library written 100% in Kotlin to help accelerate Android UI development. Paparazzi started as a Hack Week project back in March. We started by digging around in AOSP sources to learn more about how the layout preview in Android Studio actually works. Um, quick side note, um, I found out an interesting way. You can actually debug Android Studio so that if you want to see how Android Studio runs, like all code runs, um, if you edit your custom VM options in Android Studio and add this line to there, you can restart Android Studio in debug mode, and then from another IDE that has AOSP sources in it, remote attached to the Android Studio that starts up in debug mode. And now when you load the layout preview, you'll step through the actual code. Um, this was tremendously useful because as you probably know, digging through AOSP sources with their hyperlinks um, doesn't really work past one or two classes, just the cognitive load of digging through it is hard. Um, on top of that, um, if you check out AOSP and try to build it like a good Android engineer, you'll realize that unless you have your Basil configuration or work at Google, it won't work uh, because there is a custom Basil like submodule that is not exposed and pushed to the open source. There's actually an issue tracker where Tor Norby from the team commented, oh yeah, we basically haven't pushed this in, expected people to actually dig in it. Um, anyway, that's a side note. Hopefully that's helpful. Um, after digging around in sources for a bit, in good old hacking spirit, we copied some of the plugin jars that Android Studio loads into our own project workspace and started poking around in the APIs. With a bit of refactoring, we were able to extract the core bits of that layout lib API library and borrowed some ideas from the Android Gretel plugin so that we can run the entire rendering pipeline on the JVM instead of building and installing the app to a device or emulator. Instead of the usual build times, Paparazzi runs a matter of, in a matter of seconds in a, in a JVM JUnit test. As always, your mileage may vary. Now, we still need to run some bits of the Android tool chain, right? You still need resource merging. You still need to, at the very least, compile Java and Kotlin classes. But we eliminate a bunch of things like the dexing, the proguarding, and all the other stuff that actually goes into building an APK. So we. As you can see, just this alone explains why the build times were able to be drastically reduced. Um, as I said, this is in draft mode and subject to change, but I thought it'd be helpful to at least see a, a not a live demo, a video demo. I'm not as brave as Zach and Ray um, to see how this actually work, will work in real life. Uh, okay. And so it's really hard to see in the back. Sorry about that. But what you have here is a J unit test that is um, using paparazzi to inflate views just like you would with Layout Inflator, um, and editing some uh, model on the view, some text, and then finally calling paparazzi.snapshot. Haha, <laughs> get it? It's a paparazzi because it takes snapshots of your views. What you'll see is, is that I opened up an HTML page which is generated. Think of like your JUnit reports directory. We generate an HTML file, and I'm uncommenting further codes that call that makes some change to the view model and then call paparazzi snapshot again. And when this test run occurs, now you'll see you left that browser page open and it dynamically loaded the latest snapshot. So you can possibly, especially if you have wide monitors, leave, the, leave this HTML page open as you develop your UI and keep on running your unit tests in that nice like refactor iterate fashion. Um, and so I think that's it. Uh, one thing you'll notice is that if you go to the individual page, you can scroll over the series of all past snapshots. And you saw in the second case um, that the amount, or you may have noticed, that the amount changed from $5 to $10 because that's what I wanted to test out. How did my amount rendering change with successive test runs? Um, then this latest uh, test run is going to change a bunch more things. Here I just changed some text. Now I'm changing background color. I'm changing some other bolding layouts. And then one of the latest things we worked on um, is to provide animation support. And so what right now this is doing is, aside from creating the HTML file and obviously generating some JavaScript and CSS, um, it's, it's doing animation 
encoding in GIF support, and soon to um, as a follow-up, we're going to do uh, video encoding. So rather than having to worry about basically GIF format is very slow and, and archaic, and we prefer to think just run it in video mode. Um, so that's pretty much it as a trial run. Currently, this repo is private, but we're looking to open source this over a few weeks. Snapshot test capabilities are something we're definitely going to look at. So you think right now, um, if you were using an espresso test run, um, then you had to deal with idling resources. You had to deal with, uh, God, everything else that comes with espresso. Um, and you, you don't have to, and then you maybe use the, let's say, like the Facebook has a snapshot plugin that you use there. Think about maybe replacing all that with something like this, and then you can run this on CI and detect uh, actual screen regressions in, in much shorter time. Um, support for animations I listed here is something we, looking to, we are looking to support. And then down the road, other things like Android Q would be bringing uh, wide color screenshots, support for that, uh, finally catching up to some of our iOS counterparts. Um, different API level supports so that you can see a support library rendered of views differently on API 21 versus today's uh, version. Um, you can actually detect that and have different sets of snapshots of support for that. And then, of course, custom fonts because designers may want to uh, change the font suite just like we're currently doing in Cache. Uh, and that's it. I'll be around for any questions, uh, feedback, and especially feature requests. If you find this useful, please let me know. If you think this is missing something that could make it even more uh, useful, also let me know. Uh, I'd be happy to hear it. Thank you very much.